चाइट्स के लिए चाइट्स के लिए चाइट्स के लिए द साउंड ऑफ माय हाउस मदर एकोस इन माय माइंड एंड व्हाट इट मींस इज कम टू द टेबल एंड ड्रिंक टी दैट्स द लिटिल ट्रांजैक्शन इट्स बोथ अ रिक्वेस्ट एंड एन एक्सपेक्टेशन फॉर मी टू कम टू द टेबल टू ब्रेक ब्रेड This is a warm reflection of my time living in Kyrgyzstan as a United States Peace Corps volunteer. One I'm really grateful that I got the chance to experience. And what it did for me was provide a new context on the way I live in my daily life. What you can find on a Kyrgyz table is bountiful, beautiful, and delicious treats, jams, breads, fried bread, my favorite borsak. and it's just a wonderful celebration of community and time together it's customary that in kurdistan if someone shows up to your door that you must invite them to drink tea and this is true in many parts of the world it's a cultural construct a collectivist construct and it thinks when we invite each other to the table to come and be i would say that the table is one of the most symbolic places that we could be over time It's where we could gather in community to connect, to converse, to spark new ideas, and to take an action. I get the chance to build and lead global learning experiences worldwide. I've been able to do this at 65 universities all over the world, including in Ukraine, Kyrgyzstan, Afghanistan, Chile, and Venezuela. And each one brings with it a new experience. I do this at the Common Place, uh, and I do this as well. I've done this as well with IPODIA, which is stands for Interactive Platform. It's at the University of Southern California, the Cove School of Engineering. In this room are 311 students, 16 engineering universities from all over the world, graduate and undergraduate, coming together to learn, and with the slogan, "Coming Together to Learn for a Better World." Because engineers know that the more diversity that you have at the table, the better outcomes you have with creating a product. And so, in this room during the semester, I got to be a part of this learning community. We were looking to serve young women in Afghanistan. Well, how do we create a prototype for someone who's not like us? And so, we invited 76 Afghan high school students. who were living in rural areas to join in this room also the in suburban areas but mostly in rural areas and this had just become at the time where education had changed for now so they were hiding in order to be able to be in this room and it was quite a sight 311 students 16 at engineering universities on six out of seven continents and 76 afghan girls in this room to create to spark and to innovate And so artificial intelligence was a, a major player in helping to divide these teams or to divide these teams into effective learning experiences taking the strengths and weaknesses of each student in order to put them together with people who could help amplify their strengths. And so I remember very vividly the first time that I was in this space this world these two young Afghan women are connecting with each other through technology and the first thing they said was what is your name and i thought oh my goodness this is so profound here we are we have six out of seven continents represented in this community and we have these two young afghan women just looking to get to know each other do we do that in our local lives now and days how often do we say what is your name And so I was really grateful to be a part of that experience. So this is work I've had a chance to do for the past 11 years. And my first experience doing it was with something called virtual exchange, which is creating the conditions for international peer collaborations. And so I was able to connect my high school here in New York with a high school of my my students in Kurdistan. And the first time that they looked at each other across the world through technology. This is now way before Zoom and way before what it pinned and I and I was struck because here these students are talking to each other about the things that are most interesting and important to them. And then the question piqued my interest. It was do you eat at school? <laughs> I thought to myself after 
seven months of being cursed and it had not yet occurred to me that students in school did not eat at school. That was not the place where they would connect. Such an easy to overlook cultural experience that I completely passed of my experience in Kurdistan. And I said, this is gonna change the trajectory of my life, and it did. Here we are, 11 years later, and I'm still in this space. But what it has done for me now is that I get to help global teams work together more effectively, and I get to do that through cultural intelligence. Cultural intelligence allows us, or helps us, maybe they say, understand adapt and work together with people from different backgrounds. I mean, what does this have to do with artificial intelligence? I promise, it has to do with artificial intelligence. So I asked myself this question. After working in these experiences where algorithms with two these people all over the world to work together with each other more effectively. What would it take to create artificial intelligence? If you were to conceptualize the recreation of a human being, where would you begin? Ancient philosophers asked themselves this question, and that's how artificial intelligence came about. And so I decided, or I asked myself rather, would I start with the mind, or would I start with the heart? And so I decided to start with the mind, because the mind is knowledge. And I said, okay, well, Artificial intelligence is full of knowledge. And that led me to the body because I said, well, if I were artificial intelligence, where would I collect this information and store it? And so that would lead to the computer. It's all these databases of information that help to produce an outcome. And so it's knowledge and it's infrastructure. And then I thought to myself, so mind, body, spirit. Does artificial intelligence have spirit? To date, artificial intelligence does not represent consciousness. But yet, my answer to this question is a resounding yes. The spirit of artificial intelligence is you and me. It's collective intelligence that's been collected over time. It's collected over time to produce an outcome. All of our voices over time are represented in artificial intelligence. And that's what it tells me about humanity. Mind by spirit, mind by spirit. So I started to unpack it a little bit more. What does this mean? And what does this mean in the context of cultural intelligence? Surely there has to be some connection. So I asked myself, what is intelligence? It's the ability to adapt. And so, Artificial intelligence produces an outcome based on associations. It's automation it's based on associations. So if intelligence is the ability to adapt, then it's associate, adapt, connect. And so these connections I get to do with my global teams all around the world. How do we create the conditions for us to work together more effectively? How do we produce an outcome throughout all of our collective intelligence to work together more effectively? What is the outcome that we are living to achieve? For me, that outcome is world peace. Is that the outcome that we're looking for? Because artificial intelligence represents a mirror for humanity. It is working together with us in every facet of our life, even if it isn't today. It will be. These are things that influence the way we approach the world. How do we look at our identity as humans in relation to a world that now has artificial intelligence with it? These are conversations that are happening worldwide. What I'm most grateful to know is that we get to direct and write this story. But that's going to require something called relational intelligence. It's ancient. It takes place at the table. Relational intelligence is literally that we have the ability to connect with each other, to adapt to something, and to work together effectively with respect, with intention, and with deep reverence. 
But then I also ask myself, self? Isn't that what democracy is? Our ability to work together collectively with relational intelligence to produce an outcome, a positive outcome, that outcome being peace? And so I consider this. What would it take to create the conditions for peace? And I go back to the body of artificial intelligence and its infrastructure. For anybody who's familiar with the Sustainable Development Goals, there are 17 of them in Europe. These key indicators within the world that allow us to look at what has to happen in the world. And there's a roadmap. And every 15 years, there are these different metrics that allow us to take a good look at where we are as a globe, collectively working together. The United Nations might be the first social media organization because it has 77 agencies working together in these thematic areas looking to produce an outcome based on collaboration. But collaboration, effectively done, happens by designing. Artificial intelligence is designed. Our humanity is designed. How we interact with each other is designed. Our cultural contexts is designed. How we spend our day is mapped out into the design. And so I think about these design principles what are the design principles of humanity? Mind, body, spirit, connection. That spirit with an artificial intelligence is you and me. Most recently, I get to do this work at the Center for AI and Digital Policy. This is a global think tank that focuses on putting democratic values within artificial intelligence. Because for something that's going to widely shape our lives, Shouldn't we have a say? And so they create these opportunities for public voice opportunities, and it's more than 311 people in the room. It's about 400 people in the room, experts in their own right, coming together to explore and examine policy that helps protect us, to give us the freedom for privacy, the freedom for connection, and freedom from peace. And so I go back to my original question. What can artificial intelligence tell us about humanity? It tells us that if we do it right, we can have a successful outcome. Thank you.